Hello, my name is Clara Hockney. Over the summer, I did an honors capstone research project titled Classifying Tornadic Storms in the Tennessee Valley. My mentors were Kevin Knupp and Ryan Wade of the Department of Atmospheric and Earth Science. Here's a brief overview of my project. I classified the parent storms of tornadoes and their environments. As for the scope of my project, I included all tornadoes within 120 miles of UAH's armor radar located at the Huntsville International Airport from January 2010 through April 2020. There were a total of 603 tornadoes over 115 events, and those events ranged from 1 to 94 tornadoes. For those curious, the event with 94 was April 27, 2011. Why did I do this project? While well, the Tennessee Valley often experiences unusual tornadic event circumstances, a high percentage of tornadoes occur during the night and also the cold season. I gathered data and made a database in an Excel spreadsheet, and with that data I made histograms and box and whisker plots to analyze the trends in the data. I got pretty good at using the pivot chart tool in Excel. Now I'll discuss the classifications I made. First I looked at radar data to determine the parent storm type for each tornado, and those are supercell, QLCS or quasi-linear convective system, and tropical system rain bands. I'll go into more detail on the next few slides. Then I classified them by season, and I used meteorological seasons, which start on the first of the month instead of the equinox. Next, I recorded the time of day when each tornado started. Morning is sunrise to noon, afternoon is noon to sunset, evening is sunset to midnight, and night is midnight to sunrise. I used sunrise and sunset times for Huntsville since it is in the middle of the domain. Lastly, the environmental parameters I used were 100 millibar mixed layer cape, 0 to 1 kilometer shear, and 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative helicity. For those, I looked at charts to approximate the values for the start point of each tornado. Now for some background on each parent storm type. The first are supercells, which are individual, strong, rotating thunderstorms capable of producing hail and tornadoes. Most EF4 and 5 tornadoes you hear about are from supercells. They are most common in the spring, but can occur at any time of year. The big picture on the right of the screen is from an event that had widespread discrete supercells, and the smaller picture on the left is a zoomed-in view of a classic supercell. The tornado would be occurring in that hook you see in the bottom left corner. The next parent storm type is the QLCS, which stands for Quasi-Linear Convective System. A QLCS is a broken or solid line of thunderstorms, which includes squall lines, bow echoes, and derechos, as well as something called a line echo wave pattern or loop, which is basically a wavy line like towards the top of this picture. There are often embedded supercells along the line which can produce tornadoes. QLCS tornadoes are harder to detect than individual supercell tornadoes because they like to hide in the line. They usually form in any kinks in the line, and the rotation can be better detected by looking at a velocity product. The last parent storm type is TS rain bands. TS refers to tropical system, which means hurricanes, tropical storms, tropical depressions, or their remnants. The rain bands are bands of precipitation that spiral inwards around the eye of the tropical system. Those rain bands often produce water spouts over the ocean and tornadoes when they get over land. These tornadoes are not as common in the Tennessee Valley as they are closer to the Gulf and Atlantic coasts because systems are significantly weaker when they get this far inland. Four different tropical systems produced tornadoes in the domain, Lee in 2011 and Cindy, Harvey, and Nate in 2017. Later on, I'll actually have to add Laura from this year. TS rain band tornadoes are usually weak, EF0 or 1, 
but Harvey did produce some EF2s. Next, I have some notable statistics from the data. There were 318 QLCS tornadoes, 267 supercell tornadoes, and 18 TS rainband tornadoes, 14 of which were from Harvey. I mentioned before that supercell tornadoes are most common in the spring, and you can clearly see that in this chart. I also mentioned that the Tennessee Valley has a high amount of QLCS tornadoes in the cold season and at night. There were 99 winter QLCS tornadoes as opposed to 36 winter supercell tornadoes. There were 94 QLCS tornadoes at night as opposed to 19 supercell tornadoes at night. The stat that amazed me the most was that there are but there was basically an even split between tornadoes in the daylight hours versus dark hours. Now I'll explain each parameter and associated stats, the first being 100 millibar ML CAPE. ML CAPE stands for Mixed Layer Convective Available Potential Energy, which is the amount of instability available in the lowest 100 millibars, about 1 kilometer, of the atmosphere. Supercells had the highest average ML CAPE, and QLCSs had the lowest. Summer was the season with the highest average, whereas winter was the lowest. Afternoon was the time of day with the highest average, and morning was the lowest. More heat and humidity means more energy, so these results make sense. Moving on to 0 to 1 km shear. Wind shear is the difference in wind speed between the surface and a level above the surface. That level is one kilometer for this project. QLCSs had the highest average shear and TS rainbands had the lowest. Spring was the season with the highest average, whereas summer was the lowest. Morning was the time of day with the highest average and afternoon was the lowest. These trends are almost opposite of the trends for ML CAPE. The last parameter is 0 to 1 km SRH, which stands for Storm Relative Helicity. SRH is the potential for cyclonic updraft rotation in right moving supercells. For this project, it is in the lowest 1 km above ground level. QLCS has had the highest average SRH and TS rainbands had the lowest. Spring was the season with the highest average, whereas summer was the lowest. M morning was the time of day with the highest average, and afternoon was the lowest. These match the trends for shear. Now I'll discuss the impacts of this research. I'm hoping it can help improve forecasting of tornadoes in the Tennessee Valley. It gives a better idea of when they are possible based on the environment and also the type of incoming storm system. Better forecasting will lead to more lead time on tornado warnings. A goal would be to increase public awareness in order to help save lives, especially since a high percentage of Tennessee Valley tornadoes occur at night when people are more easily caught off guard. Here are some things I've concluded from this research. QLCS tornadoes are just as common in the Tennessee Valley as supercell tornadoes. They are far more common in the winter and at night, which makes them more dangerous. In general, we don't know as much about QLCS tornadoes as we do about supercell tornadoes, so it would be a good topic for future research. Shear and SRH tend to correlate and are pretty much opposite of ML CAPE. And lastly, this research can be used to improve forecasting of tornadoes, but also to better educate the public that tornadoes are possible at any time. I'd like to acknowledge my mentors, Kevin Knupp and Ryan Wade, for all their help, as well as the Honors College for funding and the Summer Community of Scholars staff for organizing the professional development sessions and keeping us on track. Thank you, everyone.